Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, we're very pleased to have each of you here. We'd like to start today uh, by having the pastor of Clinton Advent Church, Mike Storvich, to uh, lead us in an invocation. Mike is also a retired colonel from the National Guard and was the chief information officer for the National Guard and had a, uh, a role in a number of different uh, flooding events and natural disasters in our state. And uh, he has really led the charge to help this community and to restore his church here. And we'd like to ask him to come and lead us in an invocation. If you would, if you have cell phones, turn them off. Was that okay? That was fine. <laughs> we appreciate your being here today. We're only a little part of what's going on in Clendenin. A little bit over a year ago, the governor, Tom at that time, come up and toured the, toured the church, and it was really, really bad. And um, Glenn Jeffries, I know I'm not supposed to mention people, I'll get fussed at, but it's okay. <laughs> come up and, and he and his folks did so much work for as you can't imagine governor we really really appreciate that but my job as pastor is to tell you that to God be the glory so many people have helped us so many volunteers have come to our community just the other day Columbia Gas came and they wanted to use our fellowship hall for a, a fishing tournament to help some kids in the community and they come to me and say, how much do you want to use that? I said, we don't want anything for you to use our fellowship hall. They brought a check to me, a volunteer check that the men and women put together, Governor, to help with the rebuilding of our church. That's neighbors helping neighbors. Pray with me. Father God, we do love you. Lord, we, we lift you up. And God, what a weekend, what a weekend to be here in this very place. And God, we're reminded of those that lost their lives in the flood. Lord, we pray for their families just now. This has to be a particularly difficult time for them. Lord, we just ask for grace and mercy for them. I'm reminded, God, of a man named Bill Kirshner who led the charge, former state policeman, to hunt this little girl that was lost in the floodwaters. He died this year. Bless, bless his wife. Bless that family. Lord, for, for our leaders of this state, and God, we love West Virginia. We love what this state stands for. We love Clinton. And God, we don't want to forget Greenbrier County and all those that had problems in this flood. But we pray for our families. There'll be tears. There'll be smiles. There'll be laughter. But God, we just want to give you the praise. So I thank you for the men and women of our government that had the foresight to appoint this group today that will help lead us in the charge to the future that we can be a better state and better prepared. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mike. Let me just real quickly, we'll, uh, we want to introduce a few people here and then get right on with our program. But obviously, we'll hear from uh, our governor and our Senate president here shortly. We're very pleased to have them here with us today. Uh, but also a group of legislators that we will also introduce who are going to serve on the new committee that was created by this legislation. I uh, also want to, and I'm afraid I may miss some people, but we have uh, with us the current mayor of Clendenin, Gary Bledsoe, and, and the incoming mayor as of July 1st, Chana Clendenin. And I don't know which of the council members are here. If you're a council member from, from Clinton or a council member elect, please raise your hand so we can recognize you. Great to have you, you here. I'm not sure if I can just hear you. Okay. All right. And we also have here, we're very pleased uh, to have a group of young people here with us today that we want to express our appreciation to throughout this entire uh, tragedy that we've suffered here in Clendenin and throughout the Elk River area and throughout other areas of our state. It's been one of the greatest encouragements to have so many people from across our country to come and help us, to help us rebuild this community. And it means so much to us to have you give up part of your summer here to help us. And we want to thank you for that. And just, you know, that uh, 
everyone here appreciates it. We appreciate your help, appreciate your time, and uh, we're so thankful that you're here with us today. So we want to give you a hand. Today, what we're here for is one thing is, uh, you know, to, the, tomorrow is obviously the one year anniversary of the flood. And I was thinking that about a year, uh, it's almost been a year, in two days, it'll be a year ago that we stood here at this very spot. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to be here today is Governor Tomlin came here and, and uh, visited Clendenin and encouraged our people, uh, encouraged the citizens and you know, when this, this site looks a great deal different than it did a year ago, uh, because behind us we had the, uh, what was left of our, our Dairy Queen, of our uh, other buildings in the area, these stores were closed, and you can see we're, we're coming back. Clinton is coming back, Elk River is coming back, just like Raynell and White Sulphur Springs, Richwood, all the areas that were devastated by this flood. And I was thinking about the, being here on the river the weekend before the flood, I had it was Father's Day, and I had the opportunity to kayak with my daughter from Queen Shoals up here to Clinton, and, and it, the water was so low that we had to take our kayaks out to different places. And uh, within about 12 hours, the water was up about, I think, at least midway, past the midway point of this door. Where we're standing here was completely underwater in about a 12-hour period, unlike anything we'd ever seen before. Uh, so. We want to take a moment to thank everybody that has been a part of this recovery. And there have been so many people, and so many people in, that are here with us today and, and others who aren't, uh, have, have played such a great role in rebuilding our communities and restoring Clendenin, Elkview, and all the different areas that have been flooded. Now, one of the things that I also want to, want to point out is that we've, we've passed two pretty significant pieces of legislation since that time. One was one that we passed in September that provided $85 million to match the federal FEMA money as part of this rebuilding. And we were able to join Governor Tomlin to pass to us, for him to sign that bill at Elkview Middle, which is now also uh, Herbert Hoover High School and Elkview Middle. Uh, but he, that was the last piece of legislation he signed as governor. And now we're very pleased to have Governor Justice with us today to sign another piece of significant legislation that came from this flooding event. And we want to, first of all, say what, how much we appreciate our first responders, all the volunteers, all the things that they've done. But what we want to do is, is not only remember what has happened over this past year and remember those who, who we lost in this flood, but also to look forward, look to the future. And what we can do to take from this tragedy and all the challenges that came from it, something positive, something good, to build our communities back even stronger than they were before. And I think that's all of our goal. And we've worked well together to do that, and we want to continue to work well together to do that. Uh, but one of the things that, that we need to do is to take the time to talk to the people who have been involved in this recovery effort over the last year and see what what we need to change perhaps, what roadblocks maybe they met in this past year, things that they have seen would work even better. And that's the purpose of the legislation that we're signing today. This legislation will, will do basically two things. First of all, we'll create a, an ongoing interim committee of the legislature, both House and Senate, that will continue the work of looking at ways that we can prevent flooding. Uh, we know we can't prevent all flooding, we want to find ways to prevent flooding, to be ready for flooding when it occurs, and to be able to better coordinate the efforts after a flood takes place. We want to, uh, to lessen the impact on flooding when it does occur, as I said, and make sure that all our citizens have adequate warning of floods, the, the extent that we can do that. And as I said, give first responders every tool we can give them, because they've done such a tremendous job. And we want them to always go into anything like this with every tool that they can possibly have. So we also want to, uh, to help coordinate the volunteer efforts. And as we said, we have such a great group of volunteers here today with us, so many people who have worked so hard, and they continue to work each and every day to rebuild our communities. So we will, I wanted to just take a moment to read just a, a quick part of the bill itself, which is House Bill 2935, and what one of the purposes of the bill is 
the Joint Legislative Committee on Flooding will study all activities related to flood protection and make recommendations to the Joint Committee on Government and Finance, which Senate President Cole and, or Carmichael and I, uh, <laughs> still getting used to it, still, Carmichael and I have, uh, have the honor of chairing, and uh, they will bring recommendations back to our committee and offer solutions to reduce the, rea the reality and threat of future loss of life and property damages associated with flooding. Now they come back every every uh, quarter to our to the State Resiliency Committee, which is an, another part of this bill, and then annually come back to the legislature with recommendations of what we can do. So this will be an ongoing effort to bring forward forward resol uh, resolutions to some of the issues that we've we faced and suggestions of what we can do to make uh, our response to flooding in the future even more effective. The second part is the State Resiliency and Flood Protection Plan Act. And what this will do is it will create a something that was actually a part of a bill that was introduced more than a decade ago that was never passed by the legislature, but it's something that I think is incredibly important. And that State Resiliency Office will have a board that includes some of the, uh, the key uh, agency heads in state government or their representatives, uh, emergency management, uh, the Adjutant General, our Transportation Department, DEP, a number of different agencies so that they can get together periodically and coordinate the efforts to move our state forward in terms of flood prevention and mitigation. So uh, again, let me just read a couple of the things that they will do. There are about 15 different uh, roles that they will play, and I'm not going to read all those, but just they'll serve as a coordinator of all economic and community resiliency planning and implementation efforts including but not limited to flood protection programs and activities in the state. They will annually review the state protection plan and update that plan no less than every than biannually. They'll recommend legislation to reduce and mitigate flood damage. They will coordinate planning of flood projects with the federal agencies. And they will also, very importantly, seek additional federal funding that can be used in our state to address these challenges as we face them. Again, all of us wish that we would never face another flood like this, but we need to be prepared because we know we can't control that. And as we move forward as a state, we wanna be the best prepared that we can possibly be, not only to recover in communities like Clendenin, but also to prevent the damages to the extent that we can. So it's now my pleasure as the Speaker of the House to appoint or to announce the appointment of the House members, and then I'll recognize Senator Carmichael to, uh, to uh, announce the appointments from the Senate perspective. But there are five members of the House, five members of the Senate who will work together on a periodic basis to, uh, to serve as this ongoing committee. And I think it's an incredibly important step, a positive step to bring something good from this tragedy. So our chair of this committee on the House side will be Delegate Roger Hanshaw, who is uh, a member of the legislature from Clay County. His area was incredibly impacted by this flood as well. And he is going to be our house chair of that committee. We also have Kayla Kessinger, who is a member from Fayette County, which was also affected by flooding. George Boogie Ambler, who is from Greenbrier County. And we, we went down a couple weeks after our, the flooding, you know, after uh, things had somewhat started to, to calm down a little bit from the initial uh, portion of this flood recovery, we had the opportunity to go down uh, and go through White Sulphur Springs and Raynell with Boogie and other members of the delegation down there and the mayors of, of those two towns and see what, you know, the devastation was there. And believe me, they faced a lot of the same issues that we faced here in Clinton and LQ. Boogie will serve. And then we have Stephen Baldwin who is also from the Greenbrier County area, who will be serving. The fifth member could not be here today uh, because of some, some personal issues that he had, and uh, that's Dana Lynch from Webster County. And Web he represents a portion of the Richwood area uh, that, was, that was affected as well. So those will be our House members. Uh, as I said, Roger will be the uh, chair from the House, House side. And I'd like to invite Roger just for a moment to uh, give us his thoughts on moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Governor, President Carmichael, I 
Friends, thank you for making time today to be here. We reflect back on where we were a year ago. Last, this week last year was a time of great loss for all of us. For, for two dozen of our friends and neighbors and family members, their lives were lost one week ago, or one, one year ago this week. For others, it was, it was homes. For others, it was businesses. And at a minimum, it was communities. And it's, it's entirely appropriate that we pause today and reflect over how far we have come in a year and how far we still have to go. You know, all of us that love West Virginia talk often about life in our mountains, and we love our mountains, and we love our hills, and we love life here among them. But a consequence and a reality of life in the valleys that we occupy as West Virginians is often flooding. And while we know we can't control flooding, we know we can't control the weather, what we can control is our response to it. And it's my hope that having a permanent committee of the legislature to now be looking at our response to flooding events on a regular, ongoing basis might put us in a better position to make sure that some of the situations that we saw develop one year ago this, this week don't repeat themselves in the future. Mr. Speaker, President Carmichael, Governor, I appreciate your leadership on this. Speaking on behalf of the communities that were impacted by the disaster one year ago, we thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Roger, and we're looking forward to uh, working with you and all the members of the legislature on this committee. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, the President of the State Senate and the Lieutenant Governor of West Virginia, who has worked a great deal with us to accomplish both of the pieces of legislation that we just talked about and uh, is going to, I know, continue to work with us to, to build a stronger flood protection plan in our state. So he's going to uh, share his thoughts about this and announce the appointments from the Senate perspective. Thank you. President Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you, Tim, or Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, Thank you. It's an honor to be with you this afternoon in front of this uh, perfect location, in front of this church and God's providence looking upon us. And uh, the rebirth of this community is a, really a tribute to all those who live here, work here, and want to make this a great place. It's a, a testament to the West Virginia spirit. And the fact that you're here from San Antonio is a tribute to the brotherly love that Americans feel for one another, that you're willing to come here to give of your time and your efforts to help again in the rebirth of this wonderful community and the culmination of this bill before the legislature and the signing of it today is a testament to the hard work and dedication that your speaker of the house that represents this area tim armstead has had for this issue he has worked tirelessly to promote clendenin and this area and to protect you from these type tragedies so uh, we all owe you a debt of gratitude for this thank you So on behalf of the Senate, it is uh, my honor and pleasure to appoint uh, five members to this uh, committee. Uh, chairing from, on behalf of the Senate is Senator Ed Gonch, who's with us today. Ed is, uh, yes, he's a fantastic advocate, fantastic advocate for this area. He represents Kanawha, uh, Putnam counties, and uh, has been very dedicated to this uh, cause. He's with us here today. We also have Senator Glenn Jeffries. And yes, let's give him a hand. Glenn not only represents this area, but he was here working during the flood recovery efforts, and he is, uh, he's put a lot of time and effort into this, and there cannot be a better appointment than these two men uh, to this committee. We also have Senator Ron Miller, uh, who represents Greenbrier County, was uh, severely affected by this flooding. Senator Chandler Swope, who is uh, an engineer by trade, and he will be able to uh, provide great insight to this uh, uh, committee as we move forward. And then from a leadership perspective, I've appointed Senator Craig Blair, the majority whip of the Senate, to uh, ensure that we have absolute uh, high-level visibility to this committee and all of its work. And so, again, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to uh, commend you for the efforts to rebuild this wonderful community and all that we do to make West Virginia and our fellow man, really, and share the love and care and concern for one another. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you, and best of luck. All that we can do to help you, we, we stand ready, willing, and able to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. It's now my pleasure and honor to introduce the governor of our great state, uh, 
the, the first conversation I had with Governor Justice after he was elected uh, was primarily about the flooding. And I, as you know, the area where he lives, where he is from originally, uh, was, was devastated, just like here in Clendenin. And uh, we had a great conversation about that, and I know that he has worked very hard to be a part of the recovery effort throughout our state, not only in the area where he lives, but here in Clendenin and throughout Richwood. I believe you're at Richwood this morning and has other uh, areas he's going to be traveling over the next few days. Uh, but it's a pleasure to have him here in Clendenin, to see the recovery, to see what work you have already done here, what work remains to be done. And it's my honor and pleasure to introduce the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for what you've done. Just think. Clendenin, just an innocent little town in West Virginia and nearly washed away. Same for White Sulphur Springs and Richwood and Rain Ale and on and on and on. I think about what you're doing. Now you've come a long ways and you probably feel like you're really appreciated, but you can't imagine truly how much you really are appreciated and how much you're loved. And so I, I want you to see this little cross. When I was in Richwood earlier today, the group of kids that was there, they were from Wisconsin. And when I was leaving and getting in the car, this little kid came running up and said, can I give you this? And I said, surely, please put it right here. Now, let me just tell you this. These great people right here and I, for the last 90 days, bickered and bickered and bickered. <laughs> but you know what? And while I was sitting here, I just thought of this. But a long time ago, and a lot of y'all are too young to even know about this, but we had a great president, Ronald Reagan, and he got shot. And while they were wheeling him into the, uh, to the operating room, he looked up at one of the docks and said, I hope all of y'all are Republicans. <laughs> and the doc looked back and said, Mr. President, today all of us are Republicans. And I would tell you this, from the day of the flood, all of us have been Americans and all of us have been West Virginians. And your help and all that's been done is so spectacular, it's, all, it's just beyond belief. Now let me tell you this from my standpoint. From my standpoint, other than maybe losing my dad or my mom, this was the worst thing that I ever experienced in my life. You know, I look at Jimmy out there and I look at all these different people that really helped and really stepped up. And I look at you, you don't have to be here. You don't have to be here. You know, you boys are probably here because the girls came. <laughs> you know, but I don't know why you girls are here. <laughs> but you know, the worst thing ever for me, ever, day after day, I would drive and I would go by and we searched for a little 14-year-old girl for six weeks we've hunted for her and finally found her miles and miles downstream. And do you know, just a couple of days ago, I was making that same path and right where we found her, there was this elderly woman walking there. Let me tell you, I can't tell you the prayers that I asked the good Lord to some way, somehow let me see her and let me find her. And let me just go over and put my coat over her in some way say, stay there until somebody comes to help. This was terrible, beyond belief terrible. And for anybody that doesn't buy into that, they just don't know. Your help is greatly appreciated and all the help that everyone has given is greatly appreciated. And the foresight to be able to come up with a plan, an action plan of a committee that is going to try to do something 
these men are to be commended, and all these as well, and many, many others. So I thank you for letting me be a part of this. I'm anxious to get here and do some signing, and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Staying at a church, so they don't come. They they pay us to come and help us, which I think is fantastic. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There you go, guys. Okay, we're gonna do some signing here. Uh oh. I guess here we go. I didn't get a sign with these. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm, I'm going to lay these over here, okay? Who are all these going to? The people that have worked off the yard on some things. Okay. Well, this is the first one. Yay! felt sorry for me that I didn't get to sign a budget so that <laughs> <laughs> extra things to sign. <laughs> One of those was a budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I wouldn't doubt it a bit. <laughs> a little sicker than that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Okay. All right. God bless everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to uh, end today. And first of all, let me just say thank you again for everyone coming. Those of us in Clinton and Elk River love this river. Learn to swim in it, fish in it. Uh, it's been a part of our lives for, for most of our lives in many cases and uh, you know the destruction that it had uh, was something that will never leave our minds will never will always be a part of us uh, but the rebuilding that's taken place over the year will always be a part of us as well and what it has meant to come together as communities as, as West Virginians has been a, a tremendous uh, experience that is a good that came out of this tragedy and I hope that this, what we've done today, will be as well. I'd like to ask Pastor Scott Ferguson from the Clinton and uh, Methodist Church, which was also across the river here, which was also heavily damaged, uh, to lead us in a, a benediction.
You know, God is good, and this is a day that He has created, so we're very thankful to be blessed because of God's creation. Even in the midst of the storm, God continues to remain good. So we give God thanks, and that's what we want to do. So we appreciate all of the legislation that has been passed to be able to help even in the times of trial and tribulation. And as people of faith, may we continue to stand strong in Christ. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have provided us with. We want to thank you for how good you are. And, Father, even in the midst of the storm, we want to praise you. Lord, we realize that the weather is coming again. But we pray, dear Lord, that we will seek you in all things and in all ways. And thank you for the legislation that has been passed to be able to help even whenever the storm rises. Father, we praise you and give you thanks in the good and in the difficult. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Also, real quickly, uh, a couple people, I don't know if he's still here. Jimmy Jeanette was here as the, uh, the uh, Homeland Security and, and uh, Emergency Management Secretary who will, who will serve on this committee. And also the members of the Long-Term Recovery uh, Committee. I know Susan's here, or Susan Jack and others that are part of the Long-Term Recovery Committee for here uh, in, in the Kanawha County area that was affected. Uh, if you'll raise your hands, those who are a part of that committee, I'm pleased to have you, Terry, and others that were uh, part of Kay Summers and others that were here uh, who have been working tirelessly week, and, week in and week out to, uh, to restore our, our communities. We thank you for all your efforts. So, again, thanks, thanks to everyone who was here, uh, and we appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you.